Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, today we're going way back in time. Because this is a historically themed cooperative game which we're going to be working together to spread the early church of Christianity throughout Jerusalem and, the, and around cities. We're talking about Commissioned here. Uh, this is a, a cooperative game for two to six players. It has a deck building element. Um, and it plays in about an hour. So let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, everyone gets to pick their player and they get a set of cards that matches their special abilities. Essentially, are a set of cards that are all identical with his special ability. It's also a player aid that allows you to go through this. So, for example, you could be Barnabas or you could be Andrew. You could be James. You could be John. You could be Paul. Or you could be Peter. So once you've selected your characters, you set up the scenario that you're going to play. Now there's five scenarios that come through the game. It, it, it asks you to start with the Acts of Apostles. Each of these have uh, sort of some historical information about that, and then tells you what's going on. Some special, any special rules, your victory conditions, how you would fail, and how you set up the board in addition to the regular rules. Basically this tells you how, what you're doing for this time that you're playing the game. You also get to configure a trial deck, which is gonna be things going against you. And you can decide either to have it be easy, or difficult, and this will help you set up the deck. Some cards will be in there no matter whether it's easy or difficult, but then other cards will get added only if it's easy or difficult, and there'll be a certain amount of cards removed depending on how many players are in the game. So here's the board. This is the A side of the board. There's also a B side that goes with one of the scenarios in the game, and we're basically getting set up here. And in this first scenario, we start all start in Jerusalem, where there's four players, so there's four apostles starting. We have two missionary meeples and six white cubes, which are members of the church, all starting in Jerusalem. So the game goes through a bunch of phases. Here is your draw pile. We all started with, with the exact same cards that our special ability has, in this case Peter. We also got two other cards and we mixed them together. And essentially with four players we're going to draw five cards. Now these would be secret, I would not be showing these to anybody else, even though it's a cooperative game. Basically I've got three of my cards that all just give me essentially two faith, which I'll talk about later. And here's the two extra cards that I drew. So what's going to happen is everyone is going to secretly, so we're going to draw our five cards, and then essentially we go through living, and so we're going to go through trials. So essentially, we, the first thing we always do after we've, we've sort of drawn our cards is we're going to go through a trial. Now, one player every round is going to be essentially the elder, and they will hold this in front of them, and that elder is going to draw the trial card. And these trial cards are always really bad things that happen. For example, there's a grain shortage. So three times in the region. Now these cards are bad. They're always affecting, unless, unless stated otherwise, they're always affecting wherever the elder is that turn. So right now I'm Peter, I'm the purple meeple. Uh, the purple pawn and so wherever i am three times in my same region i either have to remove a cube which is a church member or remove a meeple which is a missionary you don't want to really remove them too often so three times in our region we'd have to remove that so in this case we're the elder is right here and he's in this green region so throughout all the region we'd have to get rid of three total uh items here so we'll get three three of these people come out they left the church and they're off the board into the, the supply. Now this is bad because the win condition for this scenario is we got to have at least one church member of any type in every city on the board and have all the books of the New Testament here written uh, before the trial deck empties or before any five churches are extinguished. So it's a tough thing, so we that was a bad thing for us. And just to show you some other things that could happen, you only draw one per turn, but you can make it so the church doesn't grow, or people can't actually go out and start new churches from where that is. Sometimes you'll get imprisoned and they can't move for a certain amount of period of turns. Uh, you know, people can't grow into new churches. Sometimes the largest church will just get completely extinguished, which is really bad to do. And this happens twice. Always bad things happening here. Now we just started the live phase, we did the trial, and we're going to go through these different parts of the live phase, and with uh, four players, this is going to go through, we're going to go through this entire section three times before we end the round, for example. So now we're going to go on to pray, and it says quietly pray, and with four players we're going to play one of the cards. And the reason why uh, it's quiet, even though it's a cooperative game, uh, essentially, you can't be talking about what you're going to play or what you did play. So with, uh, with, with, with four player, we just put one face down here. 
So maybe I just say I'll put this card down here and everybody else will do the same. Once that's done, essentially we all flip this up and the person who's the elder is gonna pick uh, two of the cards to use. So everyone flip their card up here and mine basically is just two points towards more faith. And let's say over on James's board, he had flipped this card over and the other players had flipped them over and including the person who was the elder would also flip over ones in his own card, of course. And he's gonna choose which two cards to use. Now before this happens, typically you roll a die. And this would typically happen before you flipped over your cards. I mean, you would, you would roll this die. If it's between four and eight, it's an eight sided die. Everything's good, you can talk, messages arrive. This is the messenger die. If you roll a three, the message is lost. There's no talking during the rest of this part of the, you know, until the next person's the elder, essentially. You're going through all these little phases, you can't talk or share ideas or do anything like that. If you roll a two, the message is intercepted. You can't talk during the share, and then you roll it again, and then either you place, uh, uh, basically a mission stop, which it makes makes you not be able to spread the church, or you place a grow stop, which means the churches won't grow there. So basically all bad things can happen. On your first game, just like the rules say, I would recommend not playing with this because the game's already sort of hard enough, but this adds another layer of depth and another layer of complexity and a little bit more difficulty to the game with a lot, half the times you're not gonna be able to talk during the turns. So we would have moved, we would have used these two cards. So this goes, you see there's a draw pile here and a discard pile. This would go in the discard pile, and I would use this for two faith points. Now up here are cards you can buy with those faith. So this is one, two, three, and four faith points. Since I just used two, I can even buy one card that's worth two, or two cards that are worth one, and maybe I just grab two of these cards, and I place that, I look at them, and I place them in my discard pile, because they'll come in my deck later. Now after we've prayed for those cards, we've got, we've shared and we've used those cards, we go on to move. Now the second card I used was James's. This would go in his discard pile, but we get an additional movement, because usually you get two moves, and there's two types of moves, so this round, I'm gonna get three moves, because we used James's card. Now about those three moves, let's say there was a church, there were three, peop there were three people in a church there from earlier. Uh, there's two types of move. There's a fellowship move, which will allow you to move any number of uh, church population. And again, those could either be the cubes, the meeples, or the apostles. You can move them to and from, you can move them to as many as you want. You can move two over here if you wanted to. Over there to an existing church that's adjacent on these sort of, sort of these lines, these black lines show you what, where, where to go on the map. Another thing you could do is you can do a missionary move. And so that has to be taken with either a, an apostle or a missionary. And there has to be at least four population. And I have one because the cubes count. Two, three, four, five. So there's a population of seven. So as long as I have four, I can move. And I can move as many as I want into a new area because you're spreading the church. So let's say, let's say I take these guys and we all go right here. We go next door. Now we've done that. And you'd get one more move because we had an additional move this round. But let's just say the movement's over for right now. Then we'd grow. Anyone that has three population or more would get a, a member. So in this case, all of them have three or more. So all of them would get one more and they just continue to grow like that. Now, this would pass to the next player clockwise because we've done one live phase. This goes to the next player, we'd do it again. We do it one more time, this would go to the next player. We've done it three times with a four or five player game. And then we'd get to buy new cards. At the time of this part, you'll always have two cards and you add up the faith points on these cards, two plus one is three, and going clockwise, starting with the uh, elder, I could buy a three, I could buy a two and a one, or I could buy three ones. Let's say I buy a three, this goes in my discard. And this card was, wow, two extra movements. So if someone selects this, they're gonna get four total movements on a turn, two normally and, and two more. So essentially that's how a round works. Then you'll draw back up to five cards. If your draw pile's empty, you'll take your entire discard pile and you'll shuffle it together to make a new draw pile to draw back up to the total of five cards. And that's how the game works. Now over the course of the game, you'll be buying these cards. Your deck will be getting bigger. Some of these cards will run out towards the end. If at any point during the game, a church becomes completely extinguished, meaning every cube out of it goes away. So maybe there was just one here and something bad happened and this cube had to get removed. This church becomes extinguished and goes up here on the board there. And again, if any time we have five, all five of these things have been extinguished, the game ends. Now also the game will end if you get through all these trial cards and you don't yet have at least one church in every city on the board and the books of all the ones here. And that's just for this scenario. Now some of these cards have allow you to do like one or two things. For example, once I played this card, they could either add one to any church where the elder was or they could put this here as Matthew and Mark, and this is one of the books. So essentially end up using a card during the game to start making the books there. And you saw some of these bad cards had a lot of these logos on them. Different things happen towards the game. So as the trials hit, for example, 
if this symbol has to go here, that means that nobody can do a missionary move. So for example, even if normally this had four points uh, for population, they can't do a missionary move to grow the church from this location. Conversely, if they have this there, even though this has at least three during the grow phase, it will not grow another one until these get removed. And there's certain cards, some of the special abilities, for example, Paul's special ability allows him to, to get rid of the missionary. Another one gets rid of that. So different people's cards, and you can get some of those cards also from the faith deck as well. But in general, that's how the game's played. I also want to show you some of these other objectives. So this is a different scenario that you could play. It sets up differently. And you need to have at least uh, a church in every red, orange, and yellow city, along with Corinth. Um, and, and things like that. So they just give you different examples and different things to do. Uh, and, you know, there's appeal to Caesar, so setup's different. Special rules are different. Victory conditions are different. So all these other different things just pretty much change the game up so it's going to be different every time you play it. Now this game also comes with an awesome additional book called the Theme Appendix. And when you open it up, it literally shows you every, almost pretty much every card in the game and gives you some, some, some history as to what was going on there. Uh, which I really like in games. I love to learn a little bit about the history as I'm playing it. This is an awesome book to go along with the game. And here's the other side of the board, the B side of the board. It just cha it changes up quite a bit to look at it. And one of the scenarios in the game goes with this. And in general, that's how you play Commissioned. All right, well, there's Commission. Now, disclaimer, I did interview the designers of this game on the Dice Steeple podcast recently, and I did get a review copy of the game. Uh, well, first of all, I typically, you know me, if you watch my videos, I love historical themes, okay? I love games that I can actually learn while I'm playing, and this is one of them. That book that comes with this, that shows you all the historical references of all the cards in the game, really make this game stand out for me in that regard. Uh, so I love historical games. I typically like a cooperative game. So how did this play? I've heard, I think it was Sam Healy that said that this game feels like Pandemic in reverse. Because instead of trying to squash the disease cubes, you're trying to spread the church cubes. And in a way, I feel like that's a, a sound judgment, that it does a little bit feel like that. But I wouldn't go as far as to say is it just really just feels like Pandemic in Reverse because the game's quite different. Sure, there's elements of those cubes and you're trying to spread them out instead of, instead of doing them, instead of, you know, getting rid of them. But everything else makes it feel very different. The deck building element. I like that element where everybody has a special ability at the beginning. You have mostly those cards. And over the course of the game, you're going through your deck. You're buying new faith cards. You're putting them in your deck. And you're going to be drawing them and you're going to be trying to figure it out. I like the aspect that you're trying to play cards without anyone knowing what's going on. And then you flip them and you're like, oh man, we both played like our best card this turn and this one we really needed. So one of us is not going to get to use this card this turn and it's going to have to wait till it goes on discard pile and we shuffle again. And there's tons of those moments where like, you know what you want to do, you think you want to do, but you're not sure what other people are going to play. And it has that interesting element to it too. It has that die, the, the, the messenger die, which makes things a lot harder where like when you can't talk about what you want to do, ooh, that makes it hard. And I like the fact that it has that elder, that, you know, the elders moving the people, they're doing everything. And that sort of takes a lot of that quarterbacking or alpha gamer-itis out of this cooperative game where each turn, someone is that elder and they're pretty much doing all of the massaging, all the moving, and everyone gets a turn to do that. And sure, you're sharing ideas because it's cooperative, but one person really takes the stake each round. I liked that about it. Uh, so those are all the things I really did like about the game. And I also liked that it came out with a lot of scenarios because, you know, and I like that it has multiple difficulties. So you can play the easy deck or the hard deck with the trials. Now, I was a little concerned at first because when you play this, unlike Pandemic, when the cards come out randomly and the puzzle changes, the overall puzzle is the same. You're trying to remove all the diseases before certain things happen. And this game's the same thing. You're trying, at least in this scenario, you're trying to spread all the church and get all the books made before one of the, the, the few bad things can happen. So you have that overall arc of what you're trying to do in the game. And, but in Pandemic, the cards come out, the puzzle changes every game. There's gonna be a cube here, a cube there, a cube there. And in this regard, just because of the nature of the game, how it's kind of like that in reverse, every time that a card comes out that's a, that's a bad thing, the trials, it's always happening where the Elder is, or in, unless it says otherwise, or in the region or in the spot that the Elder is in. And so it's a little, it was a little less predictable. Uh, or, or I guess I should say a little more predictable as to what will happen. A little less like, ugh, a little less random, a little more predictable as to like where things are going to happen. Some people might like that. I felt that it made the game where after you've played the, the played it a few times, you'd kind of know what to do. Do we spread out? Do we? How many do we want to stay together? 
And so I'm really happy to see that they added five scenarios to this, and I could see them coming up with more possibly in the future, but having five different scenarios makes the game, once you've really mastered, say, that first scenario, you can go into other ones and it really changes the game in that regard, and I like that. So overall, I think it's a good game. Um, it's probably not like the best co-op I've ever played, uh, but I like how they blended theme with great artwork, with a deck building element, with, you know, there's enough things there that it's a recipe of these different ingredients that we're using this that makes the game, if you like co-ops games or you like historic games, or if you're a church or a church going group that you wanted to learn some of this stuff or play this easily and have a cool, very good game, uh, you know, experience in the sort of Christian realm where there's not that many of these. Now, I will say that the game probably needs at least one experienced board gamer to teach the game. Because it's not one of those games where you just five people that have never played board games before other than Monopoly are going to pick this up, pull out the rules, and be like, they're going to be overwhelmed. Because there is a lot there. This is a good, solid game. So you're going to want someone who's experienced or at least have played it a few times when you're, if you're sharing this with new people. Overall, good effort, good components, good artwork, good historic themes. Uh, I'm glad they added extra scenarios. So if you're looking for a co-op that, that is different, uh, both in theme and in mechanics, then you might want to give Commission to try. It's definitely a solid design.